salutations, friends and countrymen, and a happy welcome to you on the first day of our nation. Please forgive me for occasionally referring to notes. I brought this born in 1751. My memory's just not as good as it once was. You do doubtless remember that I am the fourth president of the United States. It was an important period of our country. The war, the war of 1812 was fought during my presidency. Those deceitful and duplicitous British committed too many insults to, to, to go unanswered. The war ended with the Treaty of Ghent in 1815, and thus began the period known as the Era of Good Feeling. Before being president, though, I had a number of, a number of other political jobs. I started off as a I got county commissioner in 1776, at the ripe age of 23. I was later elected to the Legislative Assembly in the state of Virginia, where I met my longtime friend Thomas Jefferson. I was defeated for re-election there, and later in life I realized that it's probably because I didn't bring enough refreshments to satisfy the electors. Oh my God. Those legal scholars and judges in the audience doubtless know me as being the main defendant in the famous case of Marbury versus Madison. That case, a very critical case in the development of the judiciary in this country, established the power of judicial review to determine the constitutionality of acts of Congress, and more importantly, established that our United States Constitution is supreme to any acts that the Congress might promulgate. As you know, I went on and served in federal office as a member of the Continental Congress, realizing that the Articles of Confederation were weak but we're not helping the nation to grow. We have the power to impose taxes and service to national debt. And so I became known somewhat immodestly as the father of the United States Constitution. I'm very proud of that work. I'm also proud of my contribution to the Federalist Papers, which I co authored with Alexander Hamilton and John Jay, and which remain, according to some scholars, the greatest interpretation of our United States Constitution ever written. I'm perhaps most proud of my contribution to the Bill of Rights added to the United States Constitution so as to guarantee personal freedoms and liberties for all citizens. And on this day of July the 4th, which incidentally was the day on which several of our former Founding fathers died, Thomas Jefferson, John Adams, and James Monroe. I'd like to read from you verbatim the First Amendment to the Bill of Rights. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press, or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Important, in 1791, time has shown that it will never ever lessen in importance to our nation. I'd like to close with a couple of my famous quotes that you may have heard before, maybe to show the evolution of my own views. In Federalist paper, Number 47 in 1788, I noted, if men were angels, no government would be necessary. And in 1815, following the conclusion of the War of 1812, in my message to Congress, I stated, peace at all times of blessing is peculiarly welcome at a period when the causes of the war have ceased, the causes of the war have ceased to operate. When the government has demonstrated the efficiency of its powers of defense, and when the nation can review its conduct without regret and without reproach. And finally, just a few years before my death, in advice to my country, I noted, the advice nearest to my heart and deepest in my conviction is that the union of the states be cherished and perpetuated. 
God bless our citizenry, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you very much.